Hello, everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another interview in our series of interviews. And this one is a uh, is pretty exciting because I've talked to a live core a lot, but I've never done a video interview with them. So I'm excited to have with me today Dr. David Albert. He's founder and chief medical officer at a live core. Welcome, Dr. Dr. Albert. Well, John, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I look forward to this. This is going to be exciting. We're going to have some yeah. fun. I mean, you know, I, I've been a fan of Alive Core for a long time, but I think some people may not be as familiar with them as I am. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and Alive Core? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm old, so uh, this is my fourth company. The last one I saw the GE, and I was the chief scientist of GE Cardiology back in uh, in 2001 to 2004, and I started Alive Core in in 2011. And you know we've grown to be a significant company, nearing 100 employees, uh, have sold close to a million devices, wow. and have hundreds of thousands of people actively monitoring their heart health using our Cardia family of devices. So it's grown probably beyond my initial expectations, and uh, and and it's been very exciting. Well, the thing I love most about a live core is that. Yeah, I guess uh, you know maybe I'll lead with my complaint about most of these wearable devices is I describe them as not medically relevant. And the thing I like about Alive Core is you've worked hard to be medically relevant, as opposed to you know like a step counter, which you know how medically relevant is that? I mean, we could have a discussion, but so I think it's really exciting. But for those that don't know much about EKGs, ECGs, uh, you know, some people call them, you know, what's the difference, you know, give us a, a kind of an overview of what that means, how it can be used for an organization, you know, maybe we can dive into the details of one lead, you know, EKG versus six lead, what's the differences, and, and when is one appropriate versus the other, give people an understanding of, of you know, because that's really the core of your device. Well, you know, uh, they say that pioneers are noted for the arrows in their backs. <laughs> and uh, uh, LiveCore was really the pioneer of what I call personal ECG. Today, their Apple Watches can do ECG and right. Lightnings and Fitbit. But we were there a long time before them. And today, we have over 110 peer-reviewed cardiology publications validating the cl clinical utility of our solutions, which is unparalleled. You know, this wasn't a company started by a 25-year-old engineer. It's a company started by a guy who'd been in, in cardiovascular technology for decades. And, uh, and so I understood the issues around the FDA, around clinical validation, about publishing your information to prove to the medical community that it improves outcomes, that it improves patient uh, uh, satisfaction. And those are all the things that we've done at Alive Core and done successfully such that, you know, when Apple introduced EKG or ECG on their watch, since that time, we've grown a lot. And I think people would be surprised that, that you know, AliveCore has, has flourished despite the fact of the world's largest, most valuable company becoming our competitor. But, but we're far more clinical than they are. And so today, if you go to Mayo Clinic as an investor in AliveCore, but, but our technology is used by Cleveland Clinic, Mass General, Cedar sinai basically every major medical center in this country, in the UK, throughout Europe, Canada, uh, Australia. So we've, we're, we're expanding both the scope of our products, we now have our six lead ECG, as well as our geographic range. We just introduced our products into India and we'll be with our partner Amran, uh, really the world's largest provider of over-the-counter blood pressure devices, will be entering other markets in Asia and around the world. So, so we're expanding in, in, in both the number of products and solutions we offer, as well as the geographic range of those solutions. Yeah, well, as an Android user, I would be buying an Alive Core 2, not an Apple Watch. But so describe the difference because, uh, you know, the Apple Watch and a lot of other things have tried to do, start doing the ECG, if you will. Uh, and but they're single lead. So when is single lead appropriate and when is a six lead ECG more appropriate? Well, for the first seven years of Alive Core, we only had a single lead ECG that is FDA cleared and, and in the public domain. And it, it's very useful for uh, detecting a number of arrhythmias. Okay, atrial fibrillation being the most common arrhythmia and the one that most uh, of these personal ECG devices are focused on, 
telling bradycardia, tachycardia. However, for instance, the Apple Watch can't tell you if you have atrial fibrillation if the heart rate is over 120. I have lots of 185 beat per minute atrial fibrillation automatically detected by cardias. But where the six lead comes in is it enables us to detect other arrhythmias. Uh, there's a cousin of atrial fibrillation called atrial flutter, which is basically invisible on a hand-to-hand -hand wrist type ECG and is very obvious in the six lead. And then there are things that are even uh, potentially more important. For instance, the measuring of something called the QT interval. Uh, we became uh, really a, an important solution during this COVID pandemic that we're still under uh, when people began using two drugs, hydroxychloroquine, uh, known as Plaquenil, and azithromycin, a common antibiotic, a ZPAC, because both of those drugs prolong QT. And in several published papers, people taking both of those drugs for COVID they're not used very much anymore. They, they underwent a rigorous uh, scientific evaluation and were not found to be very effective, but there were people who took them who developed serious arrhythmias due to this QT prolongation. And so AliveCore got a, an emergency use authorization from the FDA and our device was used in this country, in Spain, around the world for monitoring QT in these patients who are receiving these kinds of drugs. And it's also been used inpatient in the hospital because when you do an EKG in the hospital, you have to roll a cart in, you have to clean the machine, you have to, the people who do it are usually technicians. They have to become fully gowned in the PPE. Remember the, that acronym? Well, yeah. uh, that costs a lot of money. That takes up valuable PPE for people who are actually caregivers, like doctors and nurses. So when we were able to deliver a six lead ECG, and it could stay in the room with the patient and the data be transmitted outside the room to someone who didn't have all that PPE. That became very valuable and was used in a number of medical centers here in the United States and again around the world. I just watched a presentation from, from Spain from a, a city called Santander. Uh, the eponymous Santander Global Bank comes from that city on the northern coast of Spain where they used our six lead extensively in the hospital so that they avoided, uh, avoided, you know, it's easily cleaned and they avoided all the issues with having to clean a big ECG machine and use PPE. So it's found tremendous use in the hospital, but then it's also found tremendous use as the pandemic pushed people to telemedicine. So people didn't want to come in, doctors didn't want to come in, have them come into hospitals, to clinics, and so remote telecare, and you've seen that in the incredible growth of, of companies uh, uh, like uh, Livongo and, and Tele Teladoc, what we saw was a tremendous growth for a live core. As people who have arrhythmias, who have cardiac problems, saw, did telemedicine visits, and their doctor said, go buy an alive core. That way I can see what your rhythm is. And so we mm -hmm. found a very complimentary place. And while in-person visits have come back and telemedicine visits have gone down, even though the pandemic has certainly not gone away, you know, everyone believes telemedicine will be an integral part of, of primary care and follow-up care going forward. And I think a live course found its place. You know, as you mentioned, you're an Android user. Well, in India, 98% of the phones are Android. In China, 98%. So while iPhones dominate in, in the home country of the United States, the fact that we're both Android and iPhone means we have a solution that's global and 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 can suit everyone. And so we we again we skirt two areas, John. We have the direct consumer business, where sixty percent or so of our products are recommended by a cardiologist. They say, "Go get this. Send me the ECG." And then we have our medical business, and and that puts us in a unique position, a unique situation. And we have our clinical validation and, and have become a regular tool for leading cardiac doctors around the world. And so that, you know, we're, we're not a, a, a fitness tracker. We're yeah. a medical tool. Sure. It so happens you can, you can buy it uh, over the counter. 
So that is, you know, let's dive into those two areas because I think that is interesting about you and and you definitely are, are more medically relevant than so many of the other options out there. So from the clinical, it makes sense from a telemedicine standpoint. Hey, I can't be there to do the EKG, so let me have you buy this device or let me send you this device. That makes sense. I, I think it's really interesting from the PPE and COVID uh, standpoint being able to use the device in the office. Do you see it where, you know, I mean, the most famous one, Eric Topol carried one around and, and helped some people on an airplane, which is really fascinating now that we're not flying as much anymore. But, you know, like, is this something is this something every doctor should be carrying around with them to be able to do it on the spot? Or is it, and, you know, is this something every patient should? So maybe you can start with the doctor and then we can talk about the patient. Well, you know, first of all, full disclosure, Eric's a good friend of mine. He's never been received a dollar from a live core. He's never been paid. So he's uh -huh. put it in all three of his books and yeah. I, I appreciate his support and effort because he loves the product. He uses it on every patient that comes into his clinic. For sure. The device. So from that perspective, it's just like he was using it before COVID. Okay. Yeah. And so he, he just sees it as a much more convenient he doesn't have to charge somebody the $25, $30 for a 12 lead ECG. He doesn't have to take the 15 minutes it takes to do that. He can simply uh, hand them the device, get the six lead ECG, evaluate it on the spot and understand you know, what the current situation is for that patient. So for him, it's both convenience and, and clinical value. Um, and is it really about a filter? I mean, is that like, so does he use that kind of as a, okay, this is a quick way to do this. And then if he finds something abnormal, then maybe he orders the 12 lead or, you know, to verify and things. Is that the right might, approach? He might. It, it, uh, there are people who are doing that. Uh, but in many instances, you can get the full diagnosis, certainly yeah, from our six lead ECG. So uh, this patient's in atrial fibrillation. I don't need to do a 12 lead. They're yeah, in atrial fibrillation. Straight to the treatment. So, so, well, now we have to treat them. And so that, that's the issue. And, and you need to be able to do that, especially in telemedicine. It's not like you can say, well, let me screen you and then come into the hospital, which is closed down because we're full of COVID. Um, I, I can tell you that, that uh, you know, I, I read a news story and, and I have many good friends at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and they have hundreds and hundreds of their staff in quarantine right now. Uh, you know, North and South Dakota are full, full. My, my home state of Oklahoma, there are no ICU beds in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So this is, this is going to be an ongoing problem until, you know, ask me a year from now. Yeah. I hope that, that with, with, you know, control and with vaccines and with care that a year from now we're back to something we could consider to be normal. But in the meantime, uh, devices like Cardia Mobile are going to be valuable uh, and, and are going to be utilized just to take care of those patients. Because remember, one of the things that happened in New York City is people having strokes and heart attacks didn't go to the hospital. Right. They died not of COVID. They died of their strokes and heart attacks because they were scared to go to the hospital. And, and that's a problem. So those are the kinds of things we have to address. And that I think, you know, Alive Course is, is working hard to expand our solutions, to hire acuity patients, to deliver solutions for biopharma. Uh, we have a number of partnerships with large international pharmaceutical companies because monitoring the heart, uh, sometimes medicines are very powerful, but uh, those medicines can have an impact on the heart. And so we, we are in a number of, of different projects with pharmaceutical companies, helping them keep patients safe, helping them evaluate the efficacy of their drugs. And I think that's only going to expand because the notion of clinical trials as we used to run them, people coming in, staying in clinics, staying in hospital, that's gone. So we have distributed clinical trials now. And again, we're a part of that effort and have a number of partnerships, companies like Medible, and e-research technologies, which are, are what are called cl clinical research organizations, CROs. Yep. And they've come to a live core because we offer solutions that can help them deliver virtual clinical trials. And, and I think that will, you know, it's kind of like, I think if I look in the future, I don't want to be in the commercial real estate business. The cover <laughs> of the Harvard Business Review this month is the future of home work. That is those offices are going to be empty for a while. Yep. And will they ever come back? Will that ever be 
uh, uh, the same scale of business it was before. And, and I think uh, there's a lot of evidence to say the companies have learned at least a number of their employees needn't be in the office. And so I think, again, that whole mobile work ethic, we fit right in. Yeah. Well, and I think it provides really interesting opportunities to monitor patients in a different way. You, you know, your point about the hospital really hit home for me because we actually took our son to the ER uh, the, just uh, two, three days ago. And we were debating. He had some abdominal pain. He had no COVID symptoms or anything. But we were like, do we even go? Because then he, we put him at risk for COVID because he goes. And so we had that internal discussion. Uh, and then, you know, we ended up, uh, we, we did a few things, but he ended up going. And uh, the pediatric ER, thankfully, was empty. But my wife had to walk through the main ER. And she said there were six beds in the hallway. And, you know, no doubt COVID was overwhelming them. So, you know, definitely we want to try to avoid that. And we've wanted this for a while, right? We've, we've seen even evidence that recovery is better at home and all sorts of, you know, other studies in that regard. But I think it's interesting, um, you know, we've talked about the medical side of things, but I like the, you know, and I think Apple introduced this in a big way to a lot of people who had no idea what this even was, was kind of the personal ECG and doing that on a kind of, ongoing remote monitoring of myself and my health is that the right approach like should should everyone and you know obviously you're biased to a live core but should every patient go out there and buy an alive core you know some sort of personal ecg and do it every day is that useful or you know sh how should a patient approach that well first of all john um every patient is a consumer but not every consumer is a patient right the demographics between the average buyer of an Apple Watch and the average buyer of a Cardia are completely different. The majority of our customers are as old as I am or older, which is over 65. Okay. So they probably heard about it from their doctor is what you're saying. Yeah, that's the 60%. Who's, they are patients by and large. So now we have younger people do it. But I would tell you that, that um, you know, if, if you buy an Apple Watch or a Cardia, and you take ECGs and you take 10 of them and they tell you it's normal, your interest in keeping taking normal ECGs is probably very low. Yep. And the value to you is probably commensurately very low. Mm -hmm. But if you're a patient who has recurrent or even infrequent real arrhythmias, then the value is very high because you want peace of mind. You want to know, like you and your wife's decision, do I need to go to the emergency room? Do I need to contact my doctor? And that's where these devices have their greatest value today. They either A, provide you the right information, but B, they provide you peace of mind. And I'm not in atrial fibrillation. I'm okay. I'll calm down. I was a little anxious. These are the things that are, that are very valuable to that person, to that patient. And, and presenting it as a consumer, well, they are a consumer. Uh, and so a live core has has skirted those two areas of medicine and consumer business. And Apple is, you know, there's no better consumer company in the world than Apple. And so we feel humbled when they introduced their product that they, you know, we had been kind of a, a lone voice in the wilderness. And they came in and said, this is important. And as I said, all they did is help us grow many, many times uh, in size. And, and we thank them for that. Sure. So, you know, I think you guys have another product because I think the other thing when you were describing six lead ECG versus one lead and what was the result and all that, like, it, you know, it's not a step counter where I look at it and say, oh, I didn't step as much. I know what that means, that I didn't get movement and that, you know, like I have some intuitive sense of, you know, that more movement is better for my health and less movement is worse, right? Like, in this case, you know, if I see an ECG, which, you know, I think I have one laying around here somewhere, <laughs> like, I don't know what that means. So, you know, it sounds like most of them are tied to the doctor, but I think you provide a consumer service as well, right? We do. We, 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 well, first of all, we provide, the, the first layer is AI, and, uh, and, and we're continuously working. We have tens of millions of ECGs in our cloud database that we can use to train our machine learning and our deep neural networks. And that's an ongoing effort to continually improve our AI. But then in our app, we allow you to send your ECG, your rhythm strip, 
to a board certified cardiologist who interprets it and sends that interpretation back to the app in the app. And so that's an a la carte function, but we're, we've introduced a, a service called CardioCare where one of the benefits of that service, and there are a number of them, is that you can have that cardiologist overread once a quarter. And so if you're a patient, this is very valuable because you can't always get a hold of your own doctor. I can tell you that cardiologists are very busy and, and then, you know, they're not just sitting around in an office waiting for you to send them your EKG. And so this is a, a valuable service and part of this cardiac care suite of services that we think uh, enhances the value of our product for almost everyone. Yeah. Well, I, I think to me, it's a preview of the future uh, that, you know, like you said, I maybe I don't even have a relationship with my doctor or with my cardiologist to be able to send them that info. But, you know, having that peace of mind to be able to send it to a doctor, because I think it needs to be read by a doctor. It's great that AI does it too. And, and AI may inform me, go talk to a doctor, right? Uh, you know, that's great as well. But uh, I think this is a preview of the future of, of proactive monitoring of my health and being able to know when I'm in a position that I I need to reach out to a doctor. So I think it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. You know, there, there, there was a group known as the quantified self people who, who yeah. monitored everything, uh, their diet, uh, everything in about their life. And I think what we're, what we're finding is uh, th that that is trickling to the general population being promoted by companies like Apple and Fitbit who are, who are hopefully helping people engage in their own health. And you know, the best thing we can do in medicine is prevent serious disease. We're really good at, at, at treating it, but yeah. the best thing is to prevent it. And that means making people empowered, making them engaged in their diet, their lifestyle, knowing that 10,000 steps is better than 2,000 steps and motivating them knowing that my heart rate is now 55, that's better than it used to be 60 and I've, I've lowered it through exercise. These are all important steps helping us have a better population, save money and, and improve uh, longevity. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, I've, I know a lot of the quantified selfers uh, and, and I think what they illustrated though, is there's value there, but it, it also, the patients wanted invisible. Like I actually like the word of invisibles better than wearables, which, you know, Apple watch is a good example of an invisible ECG, right. Uh, to, to a large extent. So it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. I think, uh, you know, the good news is when you have a company uh, the size of Apple, we get to ride their coattails in the acceptance and the awareness of something like an EKG to the general yeah. population. Exactly. So but what's with, next for a live yeah, core? Well, when they get, when they need a real one, they go get an alive core Cardia 6L. Uh, <laughs> and, and we're not uh, that. So, it, it's uh, a great point, right? It's a, the, you know, the, are you saying the Apple watch is the uh, gateway drug to the six lead? Is that? <laughs> That's a good description to me, John. Uh, and, 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 you know, the clinical value, uh, while a, a, a consumer might not appreciate the difference, uh, the cardiologist and the cardiac electrophysiologists absolutely appreciate the difference. And so we, we, uh, we will continue to build out new products and services. Uh, I think you will see uh, when, when you have companies like Lavongo, and Omada Health, who have shown the benefit of outside of the traditional medical sphere. As I said, traditional medicine in this country is good at treating acute care. It's not good at taking care of chronic care. It's not good, you know, you, you see your doctor 15 minutes twice a year. Well, when you need coaching every day for high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, those are things that need to be managed outside of our traditional medical system. And companies like Lavongo have demonstrated that that's a viable business. Yeah. And I, you can probably imagine that a live core in the cardiovascular space has recognized that as a potential opportunity and will be delivering those kinds of services uh, in the relative near future. Nice. I love a good tease to finish an interview. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Albert. This was a really fun conversation. And, uh, you know, uh, I, like I said, I've been a fan of the work of AliveCore. And really, like you said, you know, 
doing it from a medical standpoint and doing it from an FDA cleared. I mean, I, you know, which to me is the bar that's set for any medically relevant uh, wearable device. So uh, thank you so much for sharing this. And again, thanks everyone for watching. If you want to find more great health IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com. Thanks, Dr. Albert. Thank you, John.